Welcome back, folks, to Modern Horror's 31 Days of Halloween. It's still Wes Craven week, and today is day five. The movie is Deadly Blessing, directed by Wes Craven. Plot is go! Okay, so Deadly Blessing stars Jim and Martha Schmidt, a kind of newlyweddish couple that are on this farm next to a community of something called Hittites, which, and quoting the movie, make the Amish look like swingers. Um, and another farm household with a mother and a daughter. And Jim kind of hints that Martha is pregnant, so that's a thing. Um, the Hittites are a little bit aggressive to the two families, the mother and the daughter, and uh, Jim and Martha. They call them the messengers of the incubus. Jim was also a former Hittite, and it's his father who's like the leader of the community. In a very unfortunate event, Jim is kind of sabotaged in the middle of the night, and he's run over by his own tractor. He dies. Martha is left all alone on her farm next to the Hittites, who hate her, by the way, because they took away one of their own. Her two BFFs kind of come over to console her, and they all kind of, you know, they hang out for a bit. And a lot of strange events start happening. Another Hittite dies in a very gory, dramatic way. Um, Sharon Stone plays one of Martha's friends, who gets a lot of weird dreams of this gray man who turns into a spider, whispers her name like, Lana, like a lover. And he's, she repeats it. It's a really creepy scene. Um, and then a couple more people start getting killed off. We get to see the Hittite community and how close-minded they are. And cousins get married and they hit each other with rulers. It's very weird. And then we get a couple of more gory deaths. And it's like, and we see like the feet of the the murderer running around. And we're like, who is the killer? And we're all thinking it's the Hittites. It's is it Martha in her sleep, and so on and so forth. Turns out that the daughter is really a son! Bum bum bum! And she, he, has been the one who's been going around killing everyone because she's in love with Martha and thinks that they should be together, so that's why she killed Jim, that's why she killed her friends, and so on and so forth. So it all culminates in this big gunfight because the mother is protecting her son-daughter with a shotgun um, in the middle of the night and the Hittites are there and there's Martha and Sharon Stone is there and they're all fighting each other. So the mom gets killified and the daughter-son thing uh, gets stabbed by a Hittite. And then the father Hittite says, the messenger of the incubus has been slain. And then the movie is coming up to an end. Sharon Stone goes back to the city. Um, the Hittites leave in peace. The world, another really awful cop, is like, well, guess I helped. And no, you didn't. And then Martha closes the door and everything starts to calm down and we're winding down. And then all of a sudden, the ghost of Martha's husband, Jim, shows up and is like, beware of the incubus. The floor opens up and a demon drags her down to hell and then credits roll. What? So, girl. So, things you liked. Uh, yeah, so I liked the, the dream sequences were pretty, uh, pretty creepy looking. So they were just kind of nut- they weren't super nutty and out there, but they were still a little bit experimental. And I liked a lot of the killings, and I liked the very, very end, because that was kind of a, a cool rug out from under you sort of twist. I enjoyed that. I really liked the end. I liked, like, the brief moment that we caught of the demon. I was like, wow, that looks really cool. And um, I did like the kills. I liked the, the burning car. Um, and a lot of the deaths were fun to watch. Uh, Wes Craven really does fun deaths. Really does fun deaths. It's so much fun. Okay. Things you didn't like. Uh, the story felt a little bit meandery to me. I think they had a couple of B-plots they could have pruned back, and, and their, their fake Super Amish were sort of caricature-y. Which, for the story that they were making, they really didn't have to be. I also don't think they led up and hinted their, um, she twist quite enough. They did. Did they? Uh, there was- the mother had eventually said- at one point she said, if I had a son, I would bring him to the river and kill him. She implied very heavily that she didn't like her husband, she didn't like her son, she doesn't like any men. There was a weird conversation. Must miss that, okay. 
Uh, what I didn't like was, yeah, it was very meandery and it got really boring and really dull and, um, there was a couple of things that they were trying to set up that they set up very well, but I could have done without the Hittite beating scenes and this one son who now had to leave the community because his father wanted to hit him and he wouldn't let him hit him. Also, maybe Sharon Stone flopping around in a loft for 20 minutes. <laughs> that took forever. <laughs> you gotta get just the right shot for the cover. Now keep gyrating, Sharon. <laughs> uh, would you recommend it? Eh. For that ending, yeah. I, I would tell a friend, uh, you gotta see this movie, because it's just bonkers. Um, but it's not as fun as it could have been. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, folks, for joining us for Modern Horror's 31 Days of Halloween. That was uh, Wes Craven's Deadly Blessing. Join us next time for our first Wes Craven Presents. The famed director steps out of the director's chair and goes into the production seat for uh, Carnival of Souls. <laughs> Cheers, folks. See you later. Spooky, scary skeletons. Speak with such a screech. 